So here's the good news, right? So this is the Crawford Market Index. We're gonna start off with a day by day. And so you guys have seen this rise, right? We were here this whole time. And then you can see like this peak right here was like, I think March 17th and we were at 242. And then this free, this free fall, we've all kind of felt, right? For the last month. And we knew at some point this was gonna kind of flatten out, but we didn't know where it was gonna flatten out. So it was looking like we were gonna hit a balanced market and again, as a reminder, balanced markets between 90 and 110, 90 and below is a buyer's market, 110 and up is a seller's market. So we were wondering if this was gonna hit a, uh, a balanced market, but you can see here it's starting to level off and with the Crawford market, uh, in the, uh, the Crawford report uh, it's predicting is we're not gonna get past 140. That's the prediction, okay? So that's good news. And so what, how does this look um, compared to the last couple of years? Well, this orange line is 2018, okay? And that's kind of, I wouldn't say normal, it's just flat, right? And then we always kind of dip a little bit uh, in, uh, towards the end of the year in the holidays. Um, but as long as we're above 110, we're gonna continue to appreciate. And then in 2019, you can see this was the kind of roller coaster that we went through. And then things went bonkers at the beginning of this year. You know, we went to up to 242, like I said. Um, Avondale was over 400. Uh, Chandler and Gilbert was over 300. And then this happened. And again, we see here, it's starting to level out. This is a weekly, so it, it doesn't look as flat. You know, they haven't updated it for the week. Um, but then more importantly, is the listings under contracts. Actually, let me take a step back. So. Uh, if you look at 2020 right here, we're about 145. This is actually the same exact point we were this time last year. So last year when we were complaining that there weren't enough homes for sale and the buyers were being picky, we're in the same exact point we were as we were this time last year. So it might feel crazy as far as like, it feels like the market's slowing down sometimes, but in reality, it's just the market's still crazy. Um, and then you can see right here, the listings under contract. So uh, we were participating just like we were in 2019, as far as listings under contract. And then again, this is where demand dropped like a rock, right? And then it, it went down a little bit further and now we're back to where we were pre-COVID as far as listings under contract. So those are positive signs. Um, and then we had the, this is the, Copper index per city. So you can see here, it's pretty drastic. So we were at uh, 382 in Avondale this time last month. And you remember it was over 400. So uh, Avondale dropped 43% to 217, which is still a crazy market. Uh, Glendale 316 to 200. Uh, Gilbert from 281 to 193. Chandler from 294 to 176. So all in all, if you're looking at these top 10 markets, it's still crazy if you're trying to buy. You're still in a good position to sell. It might not feel that way when you watch the news, when you read all the doom and uh, doom and gloom, but all in all, it's still very much a seller's market. The only place it's not is Paradise Valley, where basically uh, they just took their homes off the market. Um, if you're a million plus, you know, you're grossly impacted by the stock market. And as a result, if you couldn't get what you wanted, you just took your house off the market. And that's what they did. So a lot of the activity in Paradise Valley, a lot of those inventory is gone. So all in all, overall for uh, the Phoenix market, um, we have 14,000 active in MLS. And remember we were freaking out. We went from 15,000 to 13,000, right? Now we're back to 14,000. So it's still crazy. We're still down 20% versus this time last year, but up 6% from 13,000 last month. Under contract, including CCBS and UCB, we're at 9,500 versus 12,500 last year, so down 24%, uh, and down 6% from 10,000 last month. Monthly sales, we had 7,000 versus 9,700 last year, so we're down 26%, and down 20% uh, from 8,900 last month. So this is a, you know, one of those spots where we can see, where we can feel uh, the effect of COVID, right? So it's not affecting the pricing whatsoever, but it's affecting the number of sales and we can see that here. So I can't think of any time in my entire career 
uh, where the number of sales in April was lower than March. And that's, I think that's the first time it's ever happened in my career. Monthly average sales price, 184 versus 172 this time last year. So still up 7%, down 1.3% from 187 last month. That might seem scary. It might feel like we're going through a, a depreciation, but in reality, all that all that happened was everything over 500K and up was no longer selling. And as a result, that's the reason why the uh, dollar per square foot went down. Same thing with the median sales price. We're at 299, 999, right? Walmart pricing, just a dollar under 300,000. Uh, compared to 270 uh, last year, so still up 11%, but down 0.3% from 301 last month, which was uh, our new record. So in summary, supply went up, demand came down, sales dropped sharply and prices weakened slightly. Um, and then the summer lull in luxury homes started two months earlier in 2020. Uh, the sudden rise in active listings without a contract ran out of steam during April and now it's flat out to a flat and slightly lower project, uh, trajectory for May. Sharp fall in contract activity stabilized between 20, 25% below normal for this time last year. Closings tend to follow the same pattern as listings under contract. So right now we're gonna see the effect of the closings, not now, uh, but in four to six weeks. So still, sales are still declining, but far from, uh, and we're not far from leveling out given the new contracts we found. So we've got a new floor to stand on. We should see less volatility from moving on forward. And as you guys can see in the news and your Facebook feeds, Everyone's tired of staying home. Um, you know, if you've been in an apartment, you haven't been able to do social distancing, you've been stuck in an elevator with all your sick neighbors or who you suspect is our sick neighbors, you're ready to get a house. If, you're, if you've been in a house trapped with your wife and your kids, you're ready for a bigger house, right? You've, um, the patience you had has definitely worn a little bit thinner. Um, we know that divorces are up, uh, which is not a surprise, it's sad, right? But being stuck with your significant other. Uh, if you guys are both going, A, you have to spend more time together, and B, you guys may be going through financial distress, what's gonna happen? It's gonna be, there's gonna be more divorces. So uh, divorce attorneys are busier now uh, than they've been for some time. Uh, if you have, you know, definitely keep in touch with your clients um, if that's something that you think might be happening. Uh, we're not gonna be going back to any old normal like we had before, you know, sales are gonna to continue to be lower than where they were. Um, so we're not gonna, we're probably not gonna match 2019 as far as sales activity. Um, and it could be a while before things feel normal. So Crawford thinks it could be two or three years. Um, and then uh, the big thing here is if you guys have buyers that were waiting for the crash, they're going to be very sorely disappointed. And, that, and that's something that we've been saying, but no one believes us, right? Because they think we're salespeople. Uh, so contract rate dropped 39% over the course of six weeks. But if you look at the interest rates, let me see if I can find it here. Um, our interest rates today are 3.26. This time last year it was 4.1%. Uh, so even though the median prices have increased 9% year over year, uh, the mortgage is actually 9% cheaper um, than last year. So looking at a principal and interest payment, 300,000, 30 year fixed rate mortgage. This time, uh, this time last year was 1450 a month. Right now it's 1307 per month. So it's $143 cheaper, so 10% cheaper than this time last year for the same exact house. Uh, so if you have anyone waiting like they're just hurting themselves. So make sure you have that conversation with them. And then there are fewer cash buyers today. And uh, what Michael Orr was saying was that um, anyone that's willing to take a lower offer today because they're worried is making a mistake. So if you, get, if you guys have clients that want to sell, you know, they don't have to take a low offer. They can do a price reduction to get a price right, but they don't have to take a low offer to sell. 